Hey guys and girls, just thought I would do a little random uh, video just before the storm comes and uh, share with you a few things, guys. Just share with you a few things. Firstly, I thought I'd share what I've been working on this weekend and uh, the last couple of weeks actually. Um, this here is aquaponics. Uh, basically, it's hydroponics with fish. Um, got in here, there's about 50 perch in here, just that uh, I moved house a few months ago, or maybe nine months ago or something now, just haven't had a chance to set up all my stuff as we enter an interesting world. Um, got my pond, so these are IBC containers, uh, I've got 50 silver perch in this one, 50 silver perch in this one, and basically there's lots of videos online, it's called aquaponics, and uh, you put in uh, food, in the top is just um, lava rock basically and uh, you grow your food from in here and uh, the fish poo and as they poo the water gets washed up through it, it becomes like a, a filter and that filter filters the water but then all the nutrients get absorbed by the plants in the top so these ones have just been set up today, uh, there's three of them going, uh, I'm going to have more of them this is just some old horse stables here so there's a whole pile more um next week uh, i've got um the guys coming around there's the excavator good old ex bob bobcat um going to push over a pile of these trees um that one there fell over in the in the storm last time um and then um the yeah basically going to put a six foot high chain wire fence all along here and uh, that is going to be um, an orchard in there. So I've got a couple of hundred plants in there going, or trees, like fruit trees. And then about a hundred chickens. I've got chickens up the other side, but there'll be like a big chicken free range area. And uh, I'll share with you guys, there's a lot of blue metal coming through. I just haven't finished it off yet. Um, these are raised garden beds. Don't want to go too high up and show you guys too much of my property but uh he's here got some chilies going on and uh got some capsicums they look a bit stale but they've just been placed in there um got some mint and other stuff on the fencing i put fencing up so deer don't uh, basically deer will jump through and eat everything um so the the fencing's up for that this is just for these sort of garden beds here um but yeah, got passion fruit vines and raspberry vines that'll grow up and around these fencing and there'll be so much fencing on the other side. So yeah, just a, a little bit of a start of the new uh, veggie garden here and uh, the aquaponics set up there. So the reason why um, is I shared with everyone recently, you know, people were concerned about things that have been happening the last few years. And, uh, you know, they'll try and force you into doing certain things. And the food supply is getting really poisoned right now. So it's good to have control over your own food supply. Um, there's another about 20 of these IBC containers. They're food grade ones. So these all had soy sauce in them uh, beforehand. Had soy sauce and now they've got, you know, silver perch in them. See if I can... Here we go. Whoa full of silver perch there. They're probably, you know, three inches. Some of them are six inches in there. It actually cost me $2.40 per perch. Within six months, they'll be, you know, eating size. And uh, yeah, good, cheap way of feeding yourself. And there's different things that you can be doing to protect yourself and take advantage of the situations that are out there. So I'm just gonna go and try and set myself up so I can turn this camera around don't know how to turn the camera around whilst I'm walking around because I've got something important I want to chat to you guys about so let's uh let's give this a shot and there we go so wanted to hop online because uh, we're doing Facebook lives every Tuesday and uh it's uh, this week isn't the Tuesday that I'd be doing a Facebook Live, but I wanted to throw something out there because everything I said in 2018 is sort of happening now. 
Um, I said we'd have a depression of biblical proportions. Um, they will try and find things to um, uh, blame it on or, or whatever. And uh, we're now at a point which um, something big happened on Friday. And I said that they would eventually um, blame this on. They'd find something else to blame it on and would have the banks go bust. So my, my prediction beforehand is actually all banks may cease to exist in the way that they do now. Um, they'll all need to be bailed out by central banks. Uh, for example, you know, here in Australia, you might have the RBA, which will come in, and, uh, and then that will bail out you know, the big four banks, the second tier lenders, third tier lenders, and whatever. Um, there's a thing called the deposit insurance. It's an ADI, I think it's a ADI insurance. Um, in the US, it's called the FDIC and uh, basically it insures money up to $250,000 in your bank account per bank. And uh, now in the US, and it's funny because it happened on Friday evening, uh, Friday afternoon in the US, uh, there's a bank called the SV Bank, which is a Silicon Valley bank, which basically um, is a bank which all of the tech companies use. And I said beforehand, we've got all these zombie companies, right? We're living in a world where all these zombie companies, they should be bankrupt, they're insolvent, they're trading insolvent, but they're, they're somehow, they're still alive. And uh, sorry, I just got some food in my mouth, just had dinner. But um, with it, these banks, the SV Bank, which is Silicon Valley Bank, uh, it's funny, the CEO of that is also the CEO of um, Lehman Brothers. Uh, was it? Yeah, Lehman Brothers. So the same guy, that was the head of Lehman Brothers when it went bankrupt in 2007. It's the head of SB Bank, and they call it a contagion, and uh, you know certain things could happen. Um, but this is the the linchpin that's been pulled out. Right? There's no going back from this one. Um, so what is the Silicon Valley Bank? The Silicon Valley Bank is the second largest bank collapse ever in human history. Uh, the second largest bank. And just remember, this is including 1929 in the Great Depression, where 8,000 banks um, went bankrupt in 1929. Here we are in 2023, we've got the second largest bank has collapsed, uh, it's gonna need a bailout. Um, and then upon top of that, um, it is also the 16th largest bank in America. So just putting it in to the perspective of size, it's not a small bank, um, uh, and it's got some big connections to other large financial institutions. So what is happening? How did that happen? You know, I don't want to speculate on things. I don't have all the ins and outs on it, but I said we would see insolvent entities. Uh, last time we saw, you know, a few different banks and a few different things like that. Now we're seeing governments, um, countries, uh, everyone is going broke because of the lack of liquidity. There's only one way through this, and that is for them to print a lot of more money. Um, the more money that they print, the more inflation we have, the more inflation we have, the more everything goes up, and the less your debt is to pay off. So basically, there's a bailout happening. What's happening, what, what is the flow and effect? What could be the potential flow and effect? Well, the first thing is, is that there's thousands, tens of thousands of, um, of tech companies which bank with this bank. They don't actually have money now to make payroll next week. So with the payroll not being able to be made, how many companies out there and how many families will be going without uh, payroll next week? Very, very interesting time to see, right? So if we've got large corporations going broke, we've got uh, those that bank with them going broke, every day when you hop onto the internet um, and look at the news, there's always another company that's going bust. And here we are with the 16th largest bank in America. Uh, it's probably larger than any of the banks here in Australia, has gone um, and under uh, on Friday. And uh, we've got the markets opening tomorrow, which would probably be tomorrow night. And um, that's, that's, a, that's a part of it, right? And I said to you all that we would see, I actually said this five years ago, six years ago, and everyone said, oh, stupid, it was off my head. How could banks go under? How could governments go under? How could we have hyperinflation? How could we have zero interest rates? How could we have negative interest rates? Um, and I said, we'd have the hyperinflation, and we're about to go into a hyperinflation, but no one really knows how that hyperinflation will come because we've never seen one on this sort of um, 
uh, of this scale and of this size. So, um, yeah, very interesting. Uh, it's not linear. You're not just going to see everything go up. You're going to see waves and troughs. They've tried to control this. Um, basically, as they've put up interest rates, as they've tried to restrict money supply out there, um, it has blown up zombie companies. And this week's going to be very fun. There's going to be a lot of people out there in a lot of pain. Um, so it's not all exciting. There's not, um, you know, it's not just all you know, great, you know, there's opportunity. There will be a lot of pain out there. But, you know, there becomes a pressure point and something has to break and then something else has to break. So it doesn't matter which way they steer this economic system that they've got, and something's going to give, right? And uh, yes, a lot of people are going to be out of pocket. And most people that are going to be out of pocket will be covered up in uh, inflation just by printing over it, pretending it never existed. Uh, it will be via super funds. It will be via managed funds, hedge funds. Uh, that's what's speculated in all of these financial products. And as I said, everybody, I don't have uh, paper assets of any type. Um, I've got some crypto still. Um, and I've got you know physical crypto assets uh, such as solar farm and that sort of stuff. But I'm not speaking. I think there's a lot of risk that's out there in the paper market. But as soon as that market flips around, they're just going to print over this, and we're going to see something greater in the form of inflation than what we've seen in the last three years. It is just the start of that. Um, you know, so all those guys out there that are fearful about interest rates. So I do these Facebook lives, and I'm like, it's funny. Um, interest rates have gone up. Yes, I would be the most painful person like affected from interest rate rises like that. But I see the silver lining and they have to drop interest rates. They have to stimulate the economy. And uh, by the damage that's going to be caused from what they've done, uh, it's going to be so great. They're going to have to throw more money than ever before, ever before. So I expect to see a lot of pain in financial markets, a lot of people losing money. And this won't just be for this week. It'll start this week. It has started. It has officially started. So if we were to ring a bell, ding, 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 uh, we are in the economic meltdown um, that I was talking about, which would happen. Uh, fortunately enough, it's this side of the financial year, like I said to everybody, that it would occur because it's just mathematically impossible. Something has to blow up, and uh, it has. And, you know, What's going to be the outcome from this? Yes, a lot of people will lose money because they'll be invested in one way, shape or form. There'll be people not getting paid this week globally from not having. I think there's 1,000 companies here in Australia which have their funding from the Silicon Valley Bank, which is the SVB. Uh, if you're not familiar of it, go and research SV Bank. It is very, very big. You don't hear about it because it's funding large institutions. So for these things to blow up, massive news right like this is like a september 11 moment this is like a, um, a lehman brothers 2007 but it hasn't really had the the flow on effect so if we fast forward another three months six months 12 months you'll start seeing shit blowing up off the back of this blowing up so you'll start seeing lots of companies so we've seen some companies blow up um but we're going to see a hell of a lot more companies blow up over the next six months so if you do have a super fund, um, and I'm not here to give you financial advice, I can't give you financial advice, especially around your super, there's opportunities out there to protect yourself. It may be a little bit too late for those guys. If you're in paper markets, consider you know the risk and the volatility. I'm not here to tell you to sell or not to sell. It may not be worth selling if you're in markets which are too volatile. Um, and yeah, there's lots of opportunities out there. So um, be I just wanted to hop on for a quick 5, 10, 15 minutes. Um, do that little video to let you know that you, know, you will start seeing this thing for SV Bank, SVB, all over the news. It's criminal. Um, it is unjust. Um, there'll be a lot of people hurting from this. Um, but it, it, this is the moment to go, okay, this is going to spark a change in monetary policy. This video may not age too well. Um, but time will tell and common sense will prevail and we will see over the course of the next two months, three months, four months, six months. Um, as I said, end of financial year was when I was expecting all this to unfold. And, uh, you know, you might be sitting there going, well, how does this affect me as a homeowner? Well, probably doesn't at this point. 
but what it's going to do is affect all the other areas of the monetary system um, and it's going to change the course of monetary policy and it's going to force the hand of central banks and planners to print more money which will cause even greater levels of inflation but then the banks will not be able to uh, stop the inflation but they'll have to change the course of direction of monetary supply and just let inflation run so be prepared um, I'm just going to flip my camera around one more time to share with you guys that have just popped on uh, what I was talking about here beforehand. Like, this is, these are IBC containers, uh, food coming in them, chemicals coming in them. You need food grade ones. These are called a chop and flip. It's an aquaponic system. There's six of them here. Got, they're going to fill up this whole area, so there's another 20 or so to come. Basically, you've got lava rock. It's, it's called scoria. Um, it's, uh, it's basically a rock, um, and it's like a filtration system. You put your plants in the top, and there's about 50 perch, there's 50 perch in this one, 50 perch in this one. The fish do a poo. The poo goes up the top. The filter happens. The filter grows your plants. The container costs you 100 bucks. I got someone to cut it up and do it. I gave him a YouTube video and said, hey, here's a YouTube video, make this happen. So I don't have to worry about it. If you want to drain them, you can just turn the tap off. Um, and, and yeah, so there's, there's three of them that are operating. Um, you need to have control of your own food because as a hyperinflation comes, go and research hyperinflation, guys. People can't feed their families. In Venezuela, they literally broke into the zoo like armed robbers, right? And ate the fucking animals because no one had anything to eat. And uh, this is the world that we could go into. I'm not trying to be doom and gloom, but you know, it's good to have your own produce. These are only new that I've set up. They're raised garden beds. Um, I got them off this guy. Uh, he's, I think it's called, I forget what the name of the company is, but I, I can get you the details um, and share it. If you want, just send me a message and I'll send you where I got them from. They're 500 bucks each, four meters by one meter by one meter. I'm really tall, so I've made them one meter high so I don't hurt my back going into them. Um, but yeah, got a big orchard. There's over a hundred trees going in. I need to uh, clear out this area. I'm on large, like very large sort of properties. Not, it's not just a couple of acres here. It's a big one. Um, the, um, I have deer everywhere. That's why I've got around the veggie patch. That's why I've got, um, that's why I've got the six foot high chain wire fence um, is to um, stop the deer from coming in. So I made the mistake last time at my old house uh, they, they got eaten, uh, so I just didn't really go through with my orchard. But this week, clearing out this whole area, putting in 100 plus fruit trees um, with a six foot high uh, chain wire fence. Then behind that, I've got some cattle yard, cattle rounds coming, got cattle, sheep, uh, like 100 free range chicken will go through here. Um, and yeah, it will be cool. So uh, what can you do? Uh, to protect yourself, what can you do to take advantage of this time? Uh, what are you investing into? Like this here, like 100 bucks each, yeah, 600 bucks in materials. The rocks were like, for one and a half ton were like 200 bucks. Uh, the pumps were like 60 bucks. So for a very little, you can look after yourself. So, you know, do take care of yourself in this time. I'll be back in the next week. Might do some other Facebook Lives if things really start heating up but I just wanted to get out there and um, and uh, let you know that you know I may have been five years early to the party by telling everybody that we're gonna have a hyperinflation I may have been five years too early by telling you that um, you know everything's gonna collapse it might have been five years early by you know looking into this and, and talking about it but it's better to be a day too early than a minute too late, as Lynette Zhang would say. Um, so do prepare. Uh, yeah, I don't think that this week we're gonna see the sky fall in, um, but the stage of being set, you, I said in March last year that if they increase interest rates, that they, that they can't. It's physically and mathematically impossible. Um, it, it's mathematically impossible for interest rates to go to more than 50 basis points. And if it does, 
then the whole system will collapse and not to worry about the interest rates going up because it'll be bigger problems. And here we are, uh, not even to the date of you know end of financial year, we've got the 16th largest bank has gone under, which will bankrupt other banks. You'll see off the back of it, you know, we've seen Enron, the dot-com bust. We've seen Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns um, in the GFC. We're here, uh, and every time that there's a bust, they print their way through it. Interest rates go to an all-new-time low. There's more commie spending, and there's greater levels of inflation. So, you know, I think that when we look at rate hikes, they've pushed it. They've done their thing. Uh, it's great. It's given us opportunity to increase um, rents. It's given us opportunity to, you know, recalibrate our positions. And as rates come down and they print more money, there's going to be all new people coming to the table to play and greater levels of inflation. So all your assets you've got at the moment will continue to rise. Your rents will continue to rise. And the sun will still rise tomorrow as well. And uh, the world will keep spinning or whatever you believe in if you think Earth is flat or Earth is round. But, uh, you know, the, the world will still keep going on and, uh, you know, we're just going to have higher levels of inflation. There's no way out of this apart from printing their way through or having a total system collapse. Um, with it, <coughs> I've seen here the, the money printers go, brrr, exactly, right? They're just going to turn the money printers on to fix up this problem. If you don't know what SV Bank is, research it. It's going to be like, a term in the, future, in the future where you talk about Lehman Brothers, where you talk about Bear Stearns. It is the moment in history where, you know, shit hit the fan and, uh, you know, it, it changed something. And uh, that's the 1992, they said, the recession we had to have. Um, here we are in 2023. It's the recession slash depression that they created. So, yeah. Cool, guys. Well, thanks a lot for tuning in. Um, thought I'd share it. I told you guys last Tuesday I would show you the aquaponics system that I'm setting up. Very simple thing. Uh, go research them on YouTube, aquaponics. Um, there's all different people out there doing these things. Plants up top, fish down the bottom. It's a really good, eco-friendly, uh, sustainable sort of model. And um, just raise veggie beds and uh, yeah, if you've got orchard or fruit trees or whatever, like just have, you can't have enough, right? Like you can't have enough food coming through. So we'll catch up soon, guys. Have a good week. Uh, be prepared. Be excited. Uh, get your shit sorted. If you do, if you are fearful and you need some help in structuring or protecting yourself, um, reach out to my team, admin at beinvested.com.au. Call us, 1300 367 925. Um, I'm most concerned right at the moment, firstly, for anyone that's invested in these Ponzi schemes, anyone that's invested into a bank, I actually think that banks could be redundant in the next decade. If we have a central bank digital currency, all banks could become redundant. They could just roll all the banks up straight away, Combank, Westpac, any of those banks, they could all be the next one sitting there. Um, in 2018, they did do a stress test on the financial system. That's why they did the, the Royal Commission. They could roll any of these things up. And uh, yeah, if you've got bank shares, you've got shares, you've got super fund, they're the things I'd be looking at immediately to see where you can protect yourself, where you can minimise your risk. As I said, I can't give you financial advice, but I have people that can. Uh, catch up soon. Have a great week. Bye for now, guys.